My name is Julie Turner, and I'm here to um, talk about Microsoft 365 Learning Pathways, the general availability release. So that general, it went general availability um, at Ignite this year. And so um, I just want to recap and sort of um, level set for anybody who hasn't heard about Learning Pathways, what it is, and a little bit about how it works. And then, um, and then I'll uh, do a demo of all the new and exciting features. So Learning Pathways, which originally was known as custom learning for Office 365, is this customizable on-demand training solution that try, uh, helps you with um, in increasing usage and adoption of all the various services in your organization. So it helps by delivering uh, training. And so overall, what it provides is this uh, access to this end user training content, which includes video-based training and scenarios and articles all put together in uh, pl various playlists to, um, uh, uh, to address particular topics. So it's pretty easy to install because we um, are deployed via the uh, SharePoint provisioning service. And so within minutes, without doing any coding, you can provision an entire communication site in your tenant with the Learning Pathways web parts installed for you. And the content, uh, is provided by, um, we'll call it a content delivery network or a, a light content delivery network um, that actually leverages GitHub pages so that that content gets updated quarterly by Microsoft so that the changes come to you automatically without you having to uh, do anything. And in addition, you are able to customize that content so you can hide and show uh, various technologies depending on how you're, how you're adopting Office 365 in your environment and then create your own training playlist based on your own content. So you can build your own pages in SharePoint and then combine those pages together into customized training content. And so then for version three or the um, general availability release, we have some new uh, features. For the admin, we're now supporting multiple content packs. So Microsoft provides a learning pathways content pack sort of We'll, we'll call that out of the box. Um, but in addition, you'll be able to uh, add content packs from other third party uh, training providers or even create your own content packs if you feel uh, pretty comfortable with JSON and, and putting um, playlists together, you'd be able to create your own content packs if you want to. We also added the feature to copy playlists. So one of the most requested features we had was uh, people saying, well, Microsoft has this particular uh, playlist and I like everything about it except for one of the assets I don't want to have uh, shown in, 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 uh, in our environment. And so now you have the ability to go in and pick a, play, a playlist from Microsoft or even one of your custom ones and copy it, which makes a custom playlist that is an exact replica of Microsoft's playlist and then you can customize it as you like. We've also added some updates to the user experience for adding assets to custom playlists to make that um, experience a little bit better. For the users, we've um, really improved the user experience for playlist navigation. So we had a lot of feedback that it was a little bit confusing to navigate the, uh, around the various assets of a playlist. And so we've improved that uh, user experience. We've also added a full screen mode so that a playlist uh, that is in uh, a particular section on a page can be expanded to take over the full screen. So that gives a better user experience for viewing the actual playlist content. And we've improved the responsive design of the web part itself so that it behaves a little bit better in the various sections on your page. So I wanted to just, again, uh, I've shown this before, but I wanna review the architecture of how learning pathways work. In your tenant, uh, you would have uh, deployed a, the Microsoft 365 Learning Pathways solution, which is a SharePoint framework solution that contains two web parts and it is provisioned into your tenant app catalog. Then you would have the Microsoft 365 Learning Pathways site, which is uh, in general a modern communication site. And in that site, the admin web part will be automatically added to a single app part page uh, so that you can administer your uh, envir learning environment. And then the viewer web part, which is available through the um, uh, web part selector when you're creating pages. Um, and that viewer web part can be added to any page in that Learning Pathways site, or you can enable the Learning Pathways solution into other uh, sites, either team sites or communication sites in your 
uh, tenant and thereby add the viewer web part to view training content in any of the sites in your tenant. Now, how this works is that the viewer then iframes in uh, content from support.office.com or docs.microsoft.com, depending on uh, what assets are recognized as part of a particular playlist. So some of the, the content uh, as part of a playlist is from support.office.com and some is from docs.microsoft.com. And what I'm speaking of is the content that's delivered from Microsoft specifically. And how we go about that is by uh, having a GitHub repository that uses GitHub pages, and there's three JSON files in that um, in that GitHub pages uh, library in a particular, uh, I just see an update that needs to happen. This says V2, but we're now at V3. So there's a V3 folder. It has these files in it, plus some images. Um, and that the Learning Pathways web part knows how to read those uh, manifests and then serve up the content from support or docs. So um, what then happens is um, if the content is updated in the um, GitHub repository within 24 hours, the learning uh, pathways uh, web part will recognize that there's a change and will update the content appropriately. OK, so customizations is another thing that you can do. So from the admin web part, there are three lists that are in that same learning pathway site and a custom config site, a custom playlist site and a custom asset site. And basically those lists will just hold items that have bits of JSON data stored in them that help define uh, custom playlists or ask, point to custom assets, which would be SharePoint pages in your um, site and then pulls them together and caches sort of a manifest of all the content that you have and what you've hidden and what you've shown and any custom subcategories you've created. So those customizations are stored in that manner. OK, so let's do a demo. And again, I have recorded this as a video, so I'm going to so that I wouldn't have had any problems this time. So hopefully. So let's start by just discussing the provisioning service. So the provisioning.sharepointpmp.com site um, is where you would go and you go under view the designs and then under solutions and then to the Microsoft 365 learning pathway site. And so here's a lot of descriptions about what's part of this. Um, provisioning and so it will tell you all the content that's included and also then give you resources that you can click on to read to see what the prerequisites are and where the documentation is and um, all the information you need to know about provisioning it and then when you're ready you click add to your tenant and it will bring you to um, a page where you can specify you know who you are what you want uh, where you want the site provisioned into your tenant and then you just click on provision and it will um, go out and provision that site collection for you now if you already have learning pathways and you're just trying to update to the most recent version you would go to our github site which is pmp custom dash learning dash office dash 365 and you scroll down here to current release version it'll tell you what version uh, for version three there was some upgrade um, information that you needed to be aware of but then there's complete documentation about how you download the learning pathways package and then how you update it into your tenant step by step so let me show you a little bit how that's done so um, you go into the web part folder and then you would pick the SPPKG file, which is there at the bottom, and you would download it. And then once you have it downloaded, you go to your tenant app catalog in your SharePoint site. So if you click over here, then you would be in the uh, apps for SharePoint section and you'd click on the upload button and um, it will then ask you for the path to your SPPKG file. You pick it from whatever folder you have downloaded into and then say OK. And it will update into your tenant. <clears throat> OK, so after it does that, you come into your learning pathway site, go to the uh, con site contents and if you had already had it in there, you will see it and you go to the details section and then you want to just say get it to get to the most recent version. Um, 
that step is actually optional, but I think it's a good practice. So I always try to update. And then as soon as it's updated, that will turn from being sort of that grayed out look at, looking uh, line to full blue. And now you have uh, the updated version of the Learning Pathways web parts in your site collection. So now if we just go into site pages and then down to the custom learning admin page, by landing on custom learning admin one time, you're making sure that you're forcing a refresh of the content. So that's a good practice when you do an upgrade of the web part to come to the admin page because every time you land on the admin page, it refreshes your content. So now let me go over and show all the updates to the user experience. So we can see that we had a massive content update with icons that were updated and lots of new content that was added. Things like stream uh, and sway were asked, asked to be added. And we also added an admin success center, which has playlists that link to um, content about Learning Pathways itself. So this is for the Learning Pathways admin to help them get to up to speed with the content. So that's what that looks like. And we can see in here that for a playlist, we've updated this user experience. So now to get to different steps in the playlist, we can use that um, combo box and this is the new full page experience so as you scroll through the pages you can see we've taken over the whole page um, so it gives a better experience uh, and you'll see that later that it's especially good when you have uh, multiple versions of the web part so we still have the copy a link so you can copy a link to a particular playlist and if you want to you can also search for particular content. So if I type Excel in here and hit enter, it shows me all the content that's related to Excel, either as a technology or it has Excel in the title or the description. And so we can link to those uh, custom pieces of content. So now let's just do a little demo of creating create a new page. So I'm adding a page. And so this page, we're going to start with a blank page and give it a name. And the goal here is to sort of demo how you can add multiple versions of the Learning Pathways uh, web part to a page to create a very curated uh, learning experience for your users. So I'm just going to give it a nice, and um, if that's happened to anybody else, you've got to click the button. It kills me. That's terrible. It should just be clickable. But at any rate. All right, so we click on that, and so we have a nice header, and it's all pretty, and Recenter that a little bit and yeah, yeah. Why did I take so long to do this? Must cut video. Okay, so now we're going to go in here and add a section. So if I go and create a two column section, now we can add the learning pathways web part in here and then we go into the web part properties and you can see the select learning source i'm going to talk about that a little bit more later but for now let's just go in and specify that we want to filter this web part to a particular subcategory and in this case we're going to pick outlook and then we're also going to set this to the content only which takes away the breadcrumb navigation and the search and the link uh, thing and then we can give it a special title so we can title this anything we want I you know very blandly named it Outlook but the point is that you can you know curate what you want that web part title to be and you can see that the web part is um, and I keep doing that as well uh, is nicely responsive in that section so it really um, is is playing a lot nicer with each of the section sizes that we have now, which was definitely an improvement for V3. So I'm going to link this one to OneDrive particularly. And so you can kind of see how you can put other web parts as well as the Learning Pathways web parts together to sort of create this curated experience. And here in this last section, I'm going to actually link directly to a playlist. So I'm going to add the web part here again. And this time, instead of linking to a category, I'm going to actually link to a playlist. So I'm going to go to content only mode again, and now I'm going to go to a particular playlist. <clears throat> and 
we'll do create office files. And you can select a particular asset, so you can actually move it ahead to a particular point in the playlist, but if you leave it blank, it'll start at the first, um, the first asset in the playlist. So then I give it a custom name, and now I have sort of a playlist plus other content right here in this one page. So um, now you will also be able to see that because we have that full screen um, button, we can actually come down to the playlist and go into full screen mode if we want to right from this page. So that gives a better um, experience. We used to redirect back to a viewer page and I think that wasn't as a good of experience as we could have had. So we've, we've reworked it so that it works this way and I think it's a much better experience. <clears throat> okay, so now let's come back over to the admin center and go through some new features here. So we've sort of redirected this. We've got a question mark thing there that takes you to the docs for learning pathways to help you get to those that information more quickly. And we've sort of rejiggered uh, some stuff here. Um, we have uh, some new features in the uh, or some removed some stuff in the playlist content. So now we have title and description are required and categories required, but technologies and um, let me just get down there. Level and audience now are optional instead. So you can tie this playlist to a particular technology or you can just leave it blank. So then we have level and audience that can be set. And as soon as you um, save this, then you can go add assets. And so this is the new, let me show you this new um, search and select experience. So if I type in Excel, we now have a better experience here where I can multi-select content. And if I click on the title, it will actually open that playlist into a, or asset into a new page. So you can actually preview the asset so you know which one is which. And then for adding custom assets, we've really uh, streamlined this. So all you do is add a title, optionally you can add a technology, and then there is the ability to create an asset page. And what that just does is create a page in the SharePoint library with the title as its name. And so if you click that button, it goes out and does that for you, and then um, comes back and shows you the URL to your to, to your page. And you have a button there that I uh, quickly uh, went by that you can open the page so you can go edit it. And you note here the copy playlist is there. So that's that new copy playlist feature. So you can also then now navigate to technologies here from this drop down menu instead um, to hide and show playlist or technologies if you want to do that. Um, okay, so this is the custom content pack. So um, let me show you how I built one of these. So if you go down to uh, the Learning Pathways admin stuff and into the uh, early adopter program and then into partner integration models, um, and you scroll down in here, there's a very detailed description of what each one of those JSON files are and how they're structured. So we have um, pretty good, decent, I think, documentation on what needs to be in them and then how you need to um, host them. And so what I did was created a quick demo so in my GitHub repo, I created an open source demo here of what that might look like. And so in here, I have the docs folder and then a V3 folder, and I've created an assets.json, a metadata.json, and a playlist.json file with some images that I'm using. And um, if you go into the settings of the, a particular GitHub repo and you scroll down, you can see that there's a setup section for GitHub pages. And so I've set that so that the source is the ma uh, master branch docs folder, and then it tells you what the URL is to your GitHub pages site. And so I copy that, and now I come in and I say, I wanna add a custom content pack, and I paste that URL in here, and then give it a display name. So I'll just call this Julie's content pack, and, and we save that, and now, Learning Pathways has two sets of content that it can manage. And so if I go back over to my demos web part section here and I edit my page, I can change, well, I had to refresh the page first. Let me say that. And then I can edit that web part and we'll change this Outlook one so that it's pointing at the other source. So now I can have two web parts on the page pointing to each of the content packs if I want to. And I'll just, 
specifically say, okay, I'll filter to this um, piece of content that I put in here. Um, I'm giving it a title, uh, but when you're filtering to a category, that doesn't actually make as much sense. So it doesn't look so good because it's duplicated. But the point, the bigger point here is that um, I now have content from two different content packs loading in this one page. Now, obviously, you wouldn't have to use it that way, but that ability is there for you. And so now you can see that we have, you know, all these different various pieces of content all on one page, which is um, pretty cool and pretty powerful. So let me just go back over to the admin page quickly here and just show that now that I have that in here, I can edit um, any of the custom content packs. I can edit the URLs and I can delete them out uh, if I want to at any time um, or add additional ones. So that's uh, that's part of all that. And by just clicking on each of these, I can go back and forth and manage the content separately. So, all right, let's see. Page down. Okay, and so just wanted to share some quick links um, to get to the provisioning site, provisioning.sharepointpmp.com. The documentation is uh, docs pages for custom learning, um, or you can type in learning pathways in the search and it'll take you there. Also, the support center is the GitHub repo, pnp slash custom dash learning dash office dash 365. So, Vasa, I'm all set. That's it. Yep, yeah, excellent. They will say one quick question. Is this available in the government uh, tenants? Um, and I don't see any reason why it would not be able to be. In yeah, the you would maybe have to do. Um, I think you would have to do the custom. So if you go to the GitHub repo, there's actually instructions to deploy the SharePoint framework solution and create the uh, communication site manually. And it uses yeah. um, some PowerShell to do that. You would definitely probably have to do that. Um, but other than that, as long as um, what I want to just say I am not 100% sure of is I think GCC High does not support SharePoint Framework solutions. And I don't know that for a fact, but I think I've heard that from several people. So, um, but I think regular GCC or whatever they call it um, does support. And so you should be able to, to deploy that no problem. But I would yep. definitely be interested in hearing if somebody um, has feedback and whether it's worked or not. <laughs> I have a question. This is actually really cool. I'm actually trying to set it up now for a, a customer to show them. And I'm, I, they have an app catalog, but it's not allowing me to provision saying that I don't have an app catalog configured. Um, if you have problems with provisioning, the right course of action is to submit an issue to SP Dev Docs. Okay. Um, I do know that if you um, also there is a problem if you are a, a customer with vanity URLs or the customer has vanity URLs there are some problems with that you won't be able to use the provisioning service to provision into uh, a tenant with vanity URLs um, which is office 365 dedicated which is like 30 tenants in the world mm -hmm.